You are listening to the Holistic Life Navigation Podcast. I am your host, Luis Mojica. I'm a holistic therapist, and my goal is to teach people how to find safety in themselves. I use nutrition, herbalism, self-inquiry, and somatic therapy to heal the body and mind of trauma. I have learned that each and every one of us has the ability to heal, to love, and to access all of the answers we're looking for. To do this, we first need to learn how to listen to our bodies and understand our minds. Let us begin. Today's episode is all about herbalism and the herb yarrow. I am joined today by my wife, an herbalist and astrotherapist, Eamon Bell. She is going to share with all of us her journey that led her to find herbalism and nutritional healing, as well as her herbal philosophies, and all the ways you can use yarrow to heal pretty much everything. I've used yarrow in my own life for many different ailments and illnesses and emotional imbalances throughout the years. I've uh, I've recommended it to so many clients over the years. I I think out of all my clients and friends who've used yarrow, one person had a reaction um, and they're listening right now. (laughs) So... um, it's very, 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 very rare to have a negative reaction to Yarrow. And we still don't even know if he had the reaction based on Yarrow or not. But if it was, you are the unique one. And I always knew you were beautiful and unique. So I'm not that confused or surprised. Yarrow is brilliant. It's really good for flus. It's really good for vaccines. It's really good for coronaviruses. Everything we're dealing with right now, Yarrow is the herb of our time. So um, without further ado, you'll hear the recording. I recorded it last night outside in my backyard. So you're going to hear a lot of birds chirping. You might hear some cars passing. That's the nature of an outdoor recording. Hopefully it's not too distracting. But it was felt very beautiful and nice for us to be outside under the beautiful sunset talking about herbalism and yarrow. So thank you for joining me today. I'm in my backyard right now. My daughter is supposed to be sleeping and she's looking out the window at us because today I am joined by my wife, herbalist and astrological therapist, Eamon Bell. Hello. Hi. (laughs) So we're pretending that we we don't know each other, but she's my wife. So we spend a lot of time. I mean, on one hand, we don't know each other. It's true. It's true. But we know each other pretty well. Yeah, for humans. For humans. But um, you can hear the beautiful birds, and I can smell the patch of milkweed as the breeze blows. It's a sunset by the mountains, so it's really beautiful. I thought it would be appropriate to be outside um, by our fairy garden while we talked about today's topic, which is yarrow. Yarrow Mm -hmm. is my favorite herb, I think. I'm pretty sure it's my favorite herb. It's healed so many of my conditions over the years and so many of my clients' conditions. Yet, I wouldn't have known about it had it not been for Eamon. So I thought it would be really nice to have her on so she can tell us her story, how she became an herbalist, her introduction to Yarrow herself, how she uses it, and everything you should know about it because it's amazing at uh, preventing and healing and treating flus. And with the coronavirus second wave approaching, Everybody should listen to this episode about yarrow. So before we talk about yarrow, Eamon, why don't you tell us your story about how you became an herbalist? Yeah, thanks. Um, I became an herbalist in the normal way, which is to become very, very sick and to be unhealed by all conventional medicine, Um, to have... You know, my parents unable to do anything, several doctors unable to do anything. I, I had a really intense lung condition, which involved a lot of mucus and spitting and coughing, which, you know, in my first year of high school was not exactly the impression that I wanted to make on, on my classmates. 
Um, but at the time, I had no idea about healing myself. I, you know, I went to the doctor, or they gave me steroids, or they gave me antibiotics, and they said I was smoking cigarettes, which I wasn't. They, you know, all sorts of deals were dealt, and none of them <laughs> came to fruition. <laughs> And on one hand, I was enjoying having the sickness because it was just so extreme that it was interesting. But on the other hand, it was just, I really wanted it to end. Um, but I had a good attitude about it. And then one day, my cousins, who were 15, were illegally driving us around um, Hartford, which was a nearby town. And we saw a little, like a Chinese fruit stand or something. It was a, like a little, little Chinese shop. And um, we went in just because it was new and interesting. And I saw a little book on the shelf that was all worn out. And for some reason it called to me and I pulled it off the shelf and it was called Rational Fasting by Arnold Era. And it was written in, I believe, the 1920s. And I was so excited when I saw it. I, I, don't, I didn't know even what fasting was, but I opened it up and saw in a couple pages that there was something called the mucusless diet healing system. And the fact that I was riddled with mucus, it seemed like... A really good start to me. So about the book, it was like two bucks and I brought it home and I read it that night and I decided to start fasting the very next day. And I did. I think I was 14 or early 15 and I fasted for 10 days on water. No coffee, no tea, no lemon, no anything. And a few days in, I was already feeling better, but by the end, the chronic... Um, you know, exhausting mucus lung condition I had was totally gone. And that was 26 years ago. And it's never come back even. It's never even set its foot back into my world. Um, so that was my introduction into the fact that the body was already ready to heal. That it wasn't something that came outside of me. You know, I'm glad that the fasting came before the herbs because uh, fasting coming first showed me that my body already has... Um, you know, maybe 99% of the time exactly what it needs to heal. And it just needs me to take some time uh, off of eating so it can put that into into the works. Yeah, so I stopped going to the doctor at that point. I didn't need to go to the doctor anymore. Um, I felt better. I had more energy. My skin was brilliant, which if you've ever been a 15-year-old girl, a teenage girl, then you know it's just amazing to have People would stop me in the hall and be like, wow, I thought you were a mannequin or your skin is like a doll skin. And I was like, I'm never going to stop this fasting stuff. That's yeah, good impetus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, the universe knows what carrot to put in front of you at what time. Mm. Um, I mean, I just felt amazing. And every time I, I fast, I always do feel amazing afterwards. So, so how do you go from the so that you experience the wisdom of your body's healing mm -hmm. by not feeding it? Right. And then where did herbs come in from that? Herbs came in just, they things started to trickle in naturally after that. There was um, a health food store in town, the Parkgate Health Food Store, where both my cousin, the one who illegally, I had twin cousins, and one of them worked there when she turned 16. Um, and my sister also worked there. And I had pet rats at the time, which is actually how I got away with fasting because, you know, if your parents are like mine, they wouldn't just say, sure, stop eating for 10 days. <laughs> You're sick. This is exactly what you need. So I claimed I was eating my food in my bedroom, um, but instead I would be bringing in my bowl of oatmeal or my bowl of whole wheat spaghetti or whatever it was and giving it to my very happy to receive rats. Oh, I love that. Yes. So if you've ever had pet rats, though, you know that most of them come down from a laboratory lineage where they've been bred to have tumors and most rats that you will get as pets even if they've been pets for generations they'll still often end up with tumors so I wasn't sick but I did have a rat um, who had a tumor and I brought her to there was a woman at, at the health food store where my sister and cousin worked and she was an herbalist and it was the first I'd ever heard of an herbalist and she just happened to also be punk rock queen from the 80s from the Plasmatics band, Wendy Williams, Wendy O. Williams. Wow. Not the same Wendy O. Williams who is like a radio star. <laughs> Not that Wendy Not Williams. Wendy Williams. I don't know that <laughs> much about TV her. TV personality, Wendy Williams. No, but this Wendy Williams was so kind and sweet and loved animals and knew so much about herbs. And she suggested um, milk thistle for my little rat. And 
my little rat would not eat it, but I ended up eating it and loving it. But I would go back there occasionally. I had no idea who she was. She'd show us pictures of her like with duct tape over her nipples, smashing cars. And we were like, how is this the same person? Nice. She was so kind. And, nice herbal teacher. Yeah. So it was great. I mean, you know, you mentioned I'm an astrologer. If you look at my chart, you can see that that is who my teachers are. My my ninth house, which rules higher learning, is ruled by Pisces. So mm. many of my teachers have been actual Pisces. And I, she actually might have been as well. But mm. my teachers tend to be of the fantastic. I'm a Virgo, but they bring me, you know, um, in touch with more of the cosmic stuff in a way that I can completely digest. So she was my first herbalist and she would suggest things, you know, for me, for my friends. And, and, um, I felt my heart kind of hook on that experience. Um, and then years later I had moved to the city and I was living in the city and, uh, I hadn't let go of gluten from my diet yet nobody I, I actually had as a as a teenager as well but then my parents threatened to institutionalize me mm -hmm. so I, <laughs> like all parents like all parents yes uh they didn't realize that you know in 20 years there'd be a billion dollar gluten-free industry but you know based on me noticing that in my body I didn't feel good when I ate gluten um they thought that that was sheer madness you know i wasn't hearing voices but i did not want to eat, eat gluten mm. so i had to start eating bread in front of them after that mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so i kind of forgot about that you know um for a long time and then i started having really intense bladder infections and a friend of mine who is also an herbalist um we were apprenticing together at the time she suggested letting go of um gluten but I, before I did that, um, when I let go of gluten, they went away and they also never came back. Mm. I used to get two or three a week. Mm. And um, bladder after infections. I, bladder infections. Yeah. Not friends. Did the, <laughs> did the gluten, what, did you quit gluten before or after fasting? Oh, uh, well, I mean, when I was a teenager, I, it was maybe a year until my parents noticed. So it was, it was after. It was definitely after fasting. Because I just started to realize like, oh, I don't have to do everything I'm used to doing. And the gluten for you was connected to the bladder infections. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Which is good for people to hear in case someone out there is experiencing something like that and maybe take away gluten and see how it feels. Right. I mean, before that, anybody who's listening who, who might have a bladder infection, especially chronic issue, um, I tried everything mm -hmm. and the, every single herb. I mean, this is, and I'm not complaining because the thing is, is if you are a healer and, you know, energetic, physical, whatever, you tend to find that you are tripping over unusual states of disease mm. on your way to being this healer. Mm -hmm. Because you can read about things in books, you can listen to this podcast, you can listen to you know, all kinds of amazing teachers, but unless you're actually experiencing it, you don't, you don't really have what it takes to pass something on, I believe. Um, Let's pause there. Just so everyone can take that in for a minute. And I guess when I say take that in, just notice if you as the listener, you know, what are your own experiences? Whether it's health or carpentry or a computer technician, you know, what what's the thing that you enjoy doing that you found out of a need that you couldn't get met otherwise and no one knew how to help you with, so you just learned yourself? Mm -hmm. I think um, what I hear you say is that's that's really a master, mm -hmm. like someone that overcomes it themselves and then through experience can teach other people Yeah. versus a scholar, nothing wrong with being a scholar right? Um, or someone training, but mm -hmm. to really experience the illness and heal it, Yeah. there's this experiential wisdom that is felt, I think, from the client or anyone receiving your, your uh, knowledge. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think there's just something that comes through... Um, like you said, it could be any field, but when I'm talking about herbs with a client or a class, I have such faith in them, not because somebody who I think is great told me that, that herbs are great, but because I've seen them heal over and over and over again, like without fail. Mm -hmm. And so, and I mean, that's, and it's been 25 years of them, you know, maybe 99% functioning like that w without having a, you know, a failure rate. I mean, it's not, you have to find the right herb. That's part of it, of course. But yeah, I think, I think that's a really big part of it is just, um, it's great to start and to become a scholar. 
as well. But I think when you are really pulled into a world, when you've actually experienced it, is when you have the wisdom. You know, it's your thousand hours or more that you yeah. get. Yeah. So just to fast forward, because I know your story, um, you then, if I'm correct, spent over a decade in New York City actually practicing as an herbalist. And most of that was at Flower Power. Yeah, yeah, that's where I apprenticed at Flower Power, which is a wonderful herb community in the East Village. And it's still there. It's still there, yep. She so actually has a few too. shops now. Um, my teacher was Lata Kennedy, who is an amazing herb teacher, also a Pisces. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that was, I mean, I think my, my herbal education, I'll always be glad for that because I learned so much on my own and kind of experimenting on my friends who, especially if I lived with them, would let me experiment them on them a lot. Um, but yeah, the, it, it was another kind of thing where, where people would come in and they'd say, I have this kind of rash. And I'd ask them a few questions and they might leave with nettle and they might come back next week to say, that was amazing. How did you know? Or they might come back to say, it actually didn't quite work or it worked for a day and came back. So I spent six or seven years. It was supposed to be a year and a half apprenticeship, but I just... I loved it so much that I wanted to stay and stay and stay, so I did. Um, the best thing about that experience, because <clears throat> experience, <clears throat> I can relate to it with my experience as well, it's, it's very, it's clinic style. Mm -hmm. Even though it's um, an, uh, an herbal apothecary or whether it's a health food store, it doesn't have to be a medical clinic. Yeah. But you have literally thousands of people a week that are just walking in. And in five, ten minutes, they need an answer. Yes. <laughs> and you get to consult them for free. Mm -hmm. and all they have to pay for are the herbs. Exactly. So it's quite a service you provided. Thank you. And quite an education for you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, it is a service to provide, but I feel like I came out with even more of it. I, on, on my side, it was such a blessing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, thousands of people, um, all walks of life. We had totally famous people. I had... Homeless people, I had mm. people who are on meth, who are on coke, people who are addicted to pills, um, who were also in the health industry and thought to be one of the healthiest people in the world. <laughs> um, so it was it was beautiful, you know, and it was it it was also a chance for me to learn how to love people even more. To just constantly see people in these vulnerable states mm -hmm. was just, you know, I already loved people, but to it really helped me love them even more. And you know, this is where. Um, this is where our twin flame moment comes in <laughs> because I was doing the same thing Eamon was doing in Pennsylvania. And then when I moved to New York City and uh, I got my first job in Brooklyn Heights at this uh, great, great independent health food store owned by our friend now uh, called Paralandra. It's on Remsen Street. I'm sure anyone in Brooklyn knows it. Uh, we both, she actually got the job for the wellness department that I applied for. And when I went and showed up for the interview, they said, sorry, someone just got it, but you can work in the juice bar. And I thought, the juice bar? That was such a demotion because I was <laughs> I was counseling people for years at this point quite successfully. But I thought, why not? You know, you can learn everywhere. So I went to the juice bar and did the same thing I did anywhere else with juice. And Eamon was right across. I could see her behind the, it was this old school vitamin counter, kind of like almost like a library. And there were these really tall ladders on wheels, just like Bell and Beauty and the Beast. You could just swing from side to east wing to west wing and get these herbs and pills and potions and such. And I would see her doing her work, and um, we became friends. We both started working. They promoted me because they saw that I could counsel. And then uh, we became really good friends, and we bonded so much over – we're both Virgos. We bonded so much over this, this amazing kind of, like, renegade servitude mm. anyone could come in any walk of life no judgment and they could leave and heal themselves mm -hmm. and so I, i'm saying that because having experienced that uh personally i know the depth of skill and experience you create really learning what works and what doesn't mm. because you're not reading it mm -hmm. you're not trying it just on your body and assuming it's everybody's body you're mm -hmm. literally thousands and for you i mean like we're talking hundreds of thousands i mean new york city for yeah. 10 years that's a long time yeah seven days a week yeah sometimes it was seven days a week yeah for months <laughs> for, for months and, yeah um i remember walking through these village and i mean everyone knew amen so if if you needed healing or needed help you saw Eamon walking down the street this gorgeous <laughs> post-punk rock girl she was the one you're gonna ask um so I'm, I'm fast forwarding because out of all those years of working with 
hundreds of herbs and hundreds of thousands of people. This episode is about yarrow. Mm -hmm. What's your experience working with yarrow? Well, interestingly enough, I I didn't I didn't work with yarrow before my apprenticeship, except for when I worked for a holistic foot doctor. Um, and she noticed that I was always spaced out at work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she had this, you know, a set of, I want to say like 292 flower essences. Wow. And she pendulumed box one, box two, box three, like which one, which box has the right one for Eamon in it? And she got all the way to the last box and it was yarrow. She said, you need to take this before you get on the subway in the morning. And I started to, it was a flower essence, so it wasn't even a pure, strong, you know, tincture or anything. But I did notice, because I, I had told her, you know, I feel great in the morning. And then after an hour, I lived in um, Bay Ridge, so it was an hour to my job on the train. And after an hour of being with people on the train, I would be super zoned out. And so it did help. I mean, it helped temporarily because, you know, it became time for me to not work at that job. And then my body... You know, it's like almost like my spirit leaves my body mm. before my body will leave. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I started being spaced out again. But that was actually my first experience. And that was the flower essence. That was a flower essence. <clears throat> but um, interestingly enough, the the actual flower or herb or tincture or tea can be used in a similar way. People use it for protection, um, like healing against EMFs, uh, healing against re radioactivity, healing after radioactivity. Mm. Um, it's been used all around the world for hundreds, if not thousands, probably thousands of years um, for warriors. Mm. Interestingly enough, it's it's Achillea millifolium. That's the Latin name. And milli, means? millifolium means, milla means thousand, uh, like yeah, milla means thousand, and folium means leaf, mm. like foliage, looking at the fall foliage. So millifolium is thousands of leaf, but Achillea is the Greek god Achilles, and maybe you've heard of Achilles' heel. So Ach Achilles um, was a was a god of war, but he was also a god of healing. He was like a general, and his his army couldn't be beat and it was because of yarrow mm. you know the, the myth mm. was that he used yarrow and that when he was finally hit in his vulnerable spot in his heel that he died you know he was almost immortal but not quite and he had lamented in the end like if only a yarrow had been nearby i wouldn't be dying yarrow you can use i mean um i don't mm. even remember what other what other wars and armies this this has been but i've heard so many stories like read in history books of you know the general whoever won't won't move his troops until they get the shipment of yarrow mm. in he won't because <clears throat> amazing yeah you can use yarrow topically if it's powdered on a wound it will help heal it so quickly and you can use it internally for thousands of things really i mean you mentioned colds. It's amazing for colds and flus. What what makes it amazing for colds and flus? Like what is it doing? Well, one of the things that it's doing is it has an attribute in it that kind of breaks down toxins. Um, they, they tend to bundle in oils. Like if you think of, um, like if you think of like a bunch of black pepper sticking in some olive oil, how mm -hmm. it just kind of sits there, mm -hmm. and how it would be hard. Like you might rinse off the pan that that's on, and um, it might just still be there when you're done. If you looked, oh, there's those four pieces of black pepper still there. So yarrow has an attribute in it that um, helps to break down the oils. So many problems in our body have to do with, with things that are kind of stuck in oil, like mm -hmm. the bile acids. Mm -hmm. So uh, it helps to break that down. I always say, like, if you were moving and you had a big, beautiful canopy bed and you wanted to get that bed out of your house you might call your friends and maybe you know one person is taking apart the legs and one person's taking apart the canopy roof and one person's pulling off the mattress so it becomes like a 20 piece canopy bed and then it's so much easier to remove those things from your room and your house mm -hmm. versus just trying to remove some whether it's a biological toxin you know such as a hormone thing mm -hmm. or um a, a pesticide issue or side effects from a, a medicine you were on, Euro will help to break it down and, and move it out. So can we pause for a minute? Mm -hmm. 
because I just want it, to, it's, as I'm hearing you say it, it just validates more of my experience with the arrow. Mm. And, you know, I, I had a really debilitating rash that came on um, 2010-ish. And it it took over my whole face. It was like a butterfly rash that went over my eyebrows and my beard and my scalp. And it was to the point where it was just weeping and bleeding. and I was losing my hair and it was so itchy and so painful. It was burning. Um, and I was doing a lot for it. And the more I did, the worse it got. Mm. And Eamon helped me realize, this is way before I studied herbalism or practiced or anything with herbs, that it was a blood issue. There was a blood toxicity and it was leaving through these sebaceous glands on my scalp and my beard and my face. And so what was interesting is I tried so many herbs. I tried so many cleanses. I tried fasting. I tried juice fasting. I tried, I don't think I water fasted. I juice fasted and I did a kitchery cleanse for like eight months. And though I felt the best I ever felt in my life, and I remember you saying the skin around the rash was <laughs> glowing and gorgeous, but the rash persisted. Mm-hmm. And then finally, Eamon, when we moved upstate, she had given it to me once before when I was sick, but when we moved upstate, she made a really strong batch and gave me a cup. And something about it just felt right. Mm-hmm. And so I kept drinking it. Mm-hmm. And I think it was in like a week or two. I, you probably remember better than I do. It just vanished. Mm-hmm. And my skin became really beautiful and soft. There was no scars. And to this day, if the rash is coming back, which it does, if I'm under stress or I have a hormonal thing or I'm eating too much, I don't know, sugar, if I accidentally eat dairy especially, the rash will come back. And I will use yarrow. And within like three or four days, it's gone. So I just, the, when you say about it breaking down mm-hmm. the pieces, yeah, it's like whatever wouldn't leave my liver and my kidneys and my blood, Yarrow helped usher out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what, how does Yarrow work? And, you know, we're talking about the colds and flus. So you're talking about its ability to use those chemicals, which are detergent, like mm-hmm. to break down those, those pathogens. Yeah. It also has like a, a heating property. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, yarrow will help your body to create a healing fever, especially if you're drinking it hot. Mm. Um, You probably already know that a fever is a good thing that your body is creating to help heal something. Mm -hmm. That often um, a pathogen, whatever it is is working on your body, um, you know, whether it's virus or bacteria, whatever, sometimes it cannot survive in a certain temperature. Um, like a high or a low temperature. So the body will create a fever and part of the fever's job is to rid the body of that pathogen. So that is one thing that you can do. Um, Mm. Yeah, Yeah. you know, you can also drink. I've had instances where I've been, you know, feverish or something and I've ran a very hot bath and drank yarrow in the bath and you just perspire and perspire and then you have to drink so much water because you've perspired so much and then generally um you just fall asleep and you sleep amazingly Mm -hmm. because you've already perspired you're not having those fever dreams and then you wake up and you feel great you know i can i can attest to that because ever since amen taught me and introduced me to yarrow and it it cured or healed my skin Mm -hmm. i started to take whenever i got sick and I grew up uh, very unhealthy, I had a very unhealthy diet. I was sick literally every day of the year. I missed so much school. I always had a sinus infection. And when I get sick, I get sick. I don't get like a sniffle. I'm like out. And what's really amazing is ever since doing yarrow, the cold lasts like three three to seven, like the whole thing's like a three to seven day for me. And then I'm vibrant. I'm better than I ever felt. Mm. Whereas in the past, it'd be like weeks would just be hanging on. I wouldn't get any better. So whenever I get sick, I actually make an infusion. And Eamon will explain later how to do that. Mm -hmm. And I drink the whole, in four cups hot, I just fast on that for two to three days. Mm -hmm. And every time I sleep really well, I emerge with a lot of energy. It's a very spiritual experience, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, anytime you're purging something, mm. you know, you're letting go of something that was making up what your body is. Mm-hmm. So then you're letting mm-hmm. go of it and you are you automatically are inviting in something new. And whether you choose something new or you choose something like the old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Um, I also want to say, I mean, to stay on topic <laughs> <laughs> of 
Yara, that's hard for us. Yeah, Yarrow is amazing for the flute. I mean, we have mm -hmm. at least two pounds of it dried at all times in our house. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a garden that is full of wild yarrow, as well as Luis cultivated and put in the ground some like fancy, fancy schmancy pink and red yarrows I this did, year. From Colorado. Yeah, but I, I prefer what grows here because I like stuff that has to fight and get really strong. Um, and then it's, you know, able to fight inside my body for what I need. Mm -hmm. But so we, uh, can, I just want to pause so people know what that means. That's okay. so important when you say fight. Yeah. You're talking about wild versus cultivated. Exactly. Tell them why the wild is so important. Well, the wild doesn't have a gardener tending to its every need. The wild has to have its... Um, its petals being brilliant so it can attract the right pollinators. The wild has to have roots mm. that are strong enough to get to that little drop of water it needs to survive. Uh, wild plants are just better. <laughs> it's great, mm. it, you know, it's it's great to have them in your garden too. That's also a very special experience to have, you know, to use plants um, that you've tended to mm -hmm. with your own hands and your own time and energy. But wild is, I, I always prefer wild. I just love that. I just want everyone to, to soak that in because it's just a beautiful, for me, I just got that in a really nice way. Here's that plant, like in nature, essentially, you know, um, I don't want to say fighting. Is that the right word? It's not really fighting. <laughs> I don't want to say fighting. <laughs> fighting is such an American yeah, Exactly. Word. Like I it's just, fighting to survive. Yeah, I'm not into that. I, but I feel like it's sovereign. And mm. so it has this uh, independence. It relies on itself. It mm -hmm. doesn't have someone caring for it. Yeah. So it has this kind of internal wisdom from being in the wild world. Yeah. And wild plants can tend to be smaller. Like, like I cultivated a wild yarrow and put it in my fairy garden. And it grew. It's gorgeous. It's huge this year. And it's wild and it's powerful and mm -hmm. it's still still does the job yeah but a lot of the year we find is like these little tiny pieces in the meadow mm -hmm. and when you tincture them they are powerful yeah so they're smaller but they're actually much more concentrated than mm -hmm. the larger ones yeah it's like if you went to a party with all your friends and you wanted to meet interesting people and you had 10 people there helping you you wouldn't really have to put your oomph into it as much but mm -hmm. if you went to a party by yourself where nobody you knew was there and you wanted to network or meet the most interesting person there you'd have to put yourself so strongly into every situation mm, and it's the same it. with a plant that as you said is sovereign it's really working for that i love that that's so much better than fighting it's like it's illuminating itself or it's glowing or it's shining or it's just celebrating it's it's uniqueness yeah, yeah it's, it's so just beautiful. wild yeah it's wild that's what wild is right mm. it's, it doesn't have all these rules it's not as uh you know, there's no socialism taking care of it in the garden, like in the it's garden. True, it's true. <laughs> well, what's interesting is, um, you know, the 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 wildness of yarrow and how effective it is with colds and flus. Mm -hmm. I've had a, a good handful of, of clients with coronavirus this year, and every person I've worked with, I've asked them to drink lots of yarrow. Mm -hmm. Every person that's ever called me because of diverticulitis, I've had them drink tons of yarrow. Mm -hmm. I, I can't. I don't think I can think of one person who hasn't healed quickly mm -hmm. from those two conditions from drinking yarrow. Yeah. Uh, and I, it's especially important for the coronavirus because the coronavirus dies very quickly with heat mm. and it's a pathogen. Mm -hmm. And yarrow helps the lymphatic system, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. So the lymphatic system has been shown to be so, and the blood, the circulatory system have been so compromised from coronavirus, mm -hmm. people's lungs, people's kidneys, yeah. people's hearts. Mm hmm Stroke, yarrow, strokes. Strokes, right. Yeah. Yarrow tonifies and thins and cleanses all mm -hmm. these systems. Right. And it heats up the body and it removes pathogens. Right. So isn't it like the COVID cure? <laughs> it might you be. Know? Yeah. I mean, of course, there's other things you want to do with it. Like I, I did a, a webinar a few months ago when the whole coronavirus thing started. And I shared a lot. So it was all about the coronavirus. It was herbs for the coronavirus mm -hmm. and a little bit of lifestyle things too. And yarrow was the one that I really concentrated on as well as onions. Mm -hmm. Onions are amazing for the lungs and they thin the blood. And um, sorry, I am. What, we are sitting outside and there are no seams <laughs> biting me. So you may hear my, me stroking my arm up and down. <laughs> yeah, that, as, long as, as long as they know that we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> it feels me. Yeah. I've been waiting. Yeah. So yes, it is. It, it is amazing for coronavirus and things like mm -hmm. the coronavirus. I mean, it's also people. 
people being women also use it for when we have our periods and either your period isn't coming like it's not because you're pregnant but because some sort of stress is holding it back or um like a mental stress or a physical stress like eating like maybe you ate way too much you know whatever this month and mm. your body is reacting to that mm. it's amazing for that it's also amazing for cramps um i like that you said about maybe stuff. you ate too much yeah i've had experiences where i've binged when i still used to binge <laughs> or um i'll just eat something heavy and delicious really mm. late once in a blue moon yeah and I feel a little like hungover the next morning. Yeah. And I'll just have yarrow for breakfast instead of food mm-hmm. and like in an hour. Oh yeah. It feels like it's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's in in many ways, I mean, we can think of the, you know, the warrior as as a spiritual warrior or a sovereign warrior, somebody who is willing to go off path for something that they believe in mm-hmm. and to think of again it being the plant of Achilles and other generals to, it, it's it's not only just healing for wounds, although it's so healing for wounds internally and topically, but it also gets you in the place where you can function, like you mm-hmm. said. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just that, and I mean, um, our, when our, our, we started vaccinating our daughter last year briefly, because there was a law passed in New York that you're you can't go to school unless you're vaccinated. So she is not completely vaccinated, but she's just enough to get her into that year. Um, and one, and I also taught a bunch of classes on devaxing your kids. And one of the main herbs for that was, surprise, surprise, it was yarrow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yarrow is very antiviral. And if you looked at vaccinations at all, you know there's a lot of like dis- disgusting gunk in them mm. that isn't even just viral, I mean, you know. And that is all stuff that you want to break down, like hormonal things from mm. animals. Mm-hmm. You know, that doesn't belong in your body from a vaccination going right into your bloodstream. So uh, yarrow is very prominent for that. So if you are thinking about, you know, getting or needing or getting and not wanting or whatever, wherever you are with the coronavirus vaccination, it's also great to have yarrow on hand for that. Mm-hmm. And drink it beforehand and drink it afterwards. Because you're going to be preparing for your body for it, and you're also going to be helping your body remove and clear everything that's coming through. Um, this is good for people to hear because um, the many clients, friends, just people we know, mm-hmm. uh, family, people who have vaccinated their children, um, even children that are five, six, seven years old, and and space them not even all at once. So many children have had rashes and fevers and like really bad reactions. Mm-hmm. I don't remember Lyra having one bad reaction. No, she didn't. Because she was on Yarrow the whole time. Lyra's our daughter. Yeah. She's, she had no side of it. No. Some weren't even effective. <laughs> Isn't that no, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Some were not even that that is a side effect as possibly that the Yarrow will kill off whatever, you know, harmful thing is being injected into you before it yeah. makes its mark. Um, yeah, the error was so effective that when we got her tested for immunity, mm-hmm. several of the vaccines didn't hold because the arrow flushed them out. So right. that tells you the efficacy of yarrow. Absolutely. And she's a big yarrow fan. She, we, you know, it grows wild all through our yard. Um, you know, there's the big tall ones and what we call the fairy garden, but it's just in the lawn as well. Um, right next to the wild thyme and wild, I had made my, our daughter a little tincture and a little tea and I would give it to her, you know every day during the vaccination times and it contained both thyme, uh, wild thyme tincture and yarrow. Mm. She loves the yarrow. She drinks yarrow tea, which is great because sometimes Luis or I have clients that are like, oh, yarrow, no. <laughs> it does like not the taste, taste good. I can't <laughs> choke it down. And for one thing, it's not the most intense herb you've ever had. Mm-hmm. Although if you are eating like a sugary, starchy diet, it will be a surprise to your taste buds. Yes, but our, will. our daughter will find the leaves in the lawn and she can identify them she's five and she just eats them she eats the wild thyme she eats very bitter dandelion leaves the the one great one of the wonderful things about yarrow is it does have a very specific taste to it and when you eat things that are outside the sugar starchy fatty salty flavors you're actually training your taste buds to be wild too and you're like decolonizing our poor Mm -hmm. colonized Mm. taste buds Poor colonized colons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to go there. <laughs> with wild Gosh, herbs. Yes. That's a beautiful way to put it because there is that, um, there is, you know, when you think of colonizing, it's like 
the refining mm -hmm. of things. Yeah. And I prefer everything wild. I know Eamon does. I know our daughter does. And so when you decolonize your taste buds, you're open to the, I don't know, the variety. Oh, absolutely. Of all the flavors. Yeah. Th parts wake up and you start to enjoy it. I mean, things that I thought were bitter years ago are not bitter to me now. And um, a lot of herbalists are not necessarily <laughs> healthy eaters because it's so great with herbs. You can just <laughs> just be like, oh, yeah, I can, you know, drink all night and then I'll take, it's true. Uh, you know, I'll take, you know, dandelion the next day for my liver and I'll take this for the hangover. <clears throat> but Luis and I, being Virgos, tend purist. to... Purist. What? Purist. <laughs> purist monk. I wouldn't say I'm quite a purist. But um, you are more of a purist than I am. But we tend to, I forget what I was going to say. Oh, uh, um, <laughs> I find that, that like our taste buds are so, are so happy to eat wild things. Mm. There's, I've had herbalists say, oh, you want me to take that yellow dock just with nothing? I'm like, yeah, it's delicious. Mm. And to us it is, and even to my daughter it, it is. And again, she's five, and it's not that she never eats treats but you know good treats and we try to outnumber and this works for adults too if you outnumber the treats and and limit the treats of course and try to get bitter 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 there's more there's actually more bitter receptors in our body than there are sweet receptors because our body needs it more and i have to say something about both of those points because okay. it's so vital the first one is um biologically when you're eating bitters you're having what's called a cholagogic effect. Mm. And that is when the gallbladder is making, I don't know if the word is making more bile or it's releasing bile mm. easier, essentially. Mm -hmm. There's more enzymes in it. There's more enzymes in the liver. So okay. you're actually digesting things better, which I think is so important to know. But when Eamon was saying you have more bitter taste buds than sweet, mm -hmm. our daughter loves sweets like any human being. Yeah. And she eats them in moderation. But we can put her in front of a bowl of ice cream and she will eat the ice cream mm -hmm. and then she'll stop. Yeah. Because she's she's hit her edge. Yeah. Now when I grew up, there was not <laughs> one bitter thing in my diet. Like even Robitussin <laughs> was like highly sweetened. <laughs> and amoxicillin was like cotton candy. Oh. Like nothing was bitter in my life. Yeah. I didn't have an end to ice cream. I didn't have like a, a I didn't hit a wall that said, You're satiated. Oh yeah. Until I started eating more bitter foods, mm -hmm. then I got to this point of like, I'm not craving the sugar as much. And when I eat it, I get either sick from it or I stop at a certain point. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's interesting. Yeah. Is that an effect of that? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just when you start, <clears throat> it's almost like your food is a story that you're telling your body. Mm. You know, it's a full sensory story. You're smelling it, you're tasting it, you're looking at it. And it just starts to become weird. Like, I would never stop. Like, I don't have cheat days in my life. <laughs> I would never stop and be like, oh, those Skittles at mm -hmm. the pharmacy look really good. I think I'm going to eat Skittles. I never even crave that sort of thing. But mm -hmm. when I was younger, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I had no limit as well. I mean, I would eat popcorn literally until I threw up mm -hmm. on, on movie mm -hmm. night at my, you know, growing up. Because I just wanted more and more. And part of it is you're actually, most bitters, especially roots, um, are very mineral rich. Mm. So when you have the minerals and the carbohydrates that you're craving, then you're not craving sugar the same way. Yeah, I love, and I can attest to that being Eamon's husband. I must have been Eamon's wife for, <laughs> for 10 years. Um, yeah, I can really attest to that. Eamon doesn't have cheat days. Like if she cheats, it's because I'm bringing something decadent into the house and like she'll take a bite maybe. But I've never seen someone who, it's not willpower either, it's desire. Like, she just doesn't desire shit food. No, I don't. And there's times I do still. There's times <laughs> I'm like, ooh, I want french fries because I just love the satiation. I love the feeling of it. I have so many positive emotional memories of my mother who's such a good baker. So I have a lot of emotional ties. Mm. But Eamon is just, like, full-on authentic. She'll fast for days. She'll not eat sugar for days unless it's chocolate. <laughs> chocolate is her. Really good chocolate. Really Only good the best organic dark most chocolate. Most expensive chocolate. <laughs> but it's amazing because I don't I think in the ten years I've known Eamon, 
I really, I can count on one hand all the time she was sick in 10 years. I can count on three fingers all the time she was sick in 10 years. And, and I can't even say two out of those three weren't even sick because it was after giving birth. So it was just body recovery. Mm. So really one time in 10 years, Amy was sick and it was food poisoning. Mm. <laughs> I've never experienced Amy with a cold. I've never experienced her getting the flu. She's not like a, she doesn't get sick. And I was so inspired by that when I met her. That's why I married her. No, <laughs> he it's, it's one of the reasons. No, it is why. It's one of the reasons. He, he wants to just steal all my secrets. <laughs> I want to steal our but secrets. But I'm giving them to you for free. That's why I'm having her here so she can give them to you before I do. But, you know, it, it's like meeting Eamon really is like meeting a living myth. myth. <laughs> She's beautiful. She's ageless. She, you know, we were just looking at each other on the couch before we came out here, and she looks exactly like she did 10 years ago. Part of that is something, you know, spiritual and I think mysterious and magical. Another part of it is this way that she lives. She's just a very intentional, intentionally living person. Mm. And I always find that to be the most successful thing about her because <laughs> she's not seduced by success. Like she's not. There's times where she she explodes onto a certain scene with <laughs> clients, with a webinar, whatever she's doing, just explodes with success. Then could care less about it for months. And I love that about her. <laughs> like I think that's so sexy and interesting and refreshing from the model of you have to strive and you have to. Like, she's so non-patriarchal. I mean, this one, this woman <laughs> is the most feminine woman I've ever met in my life. So. That's my personal plug about her as a human, but I'm saying all this because she's not someone that gives us advice and then goes inside and like eats chips. She's the real deal. And she's been my teacher all these years and my mentor and someone I really look up to uh, beyond just an amazing, amazing partner and mother and friend. Um, so before my <laughs> Venus and Libra gets too activated... Um, <laughs> Can you tell us where to find yarrow, mm -hmm. how to harvest it, mm. and what forms to take it in? Well, I would start by purchasing your yarrow, actually, because it does have a poisonous lookalike. Um, most medicinal plants actually don't, but yarrow does, and it's a very poisonous lookalike. Um, What's it called? Uh, you know, it's slipping my mind. I want to say it's water, hem water hemlock. Oh, yeah. water hemlock. Oh, sorry, bug biting me. Um, also, I want to just slightly tangential. You can also use yarrow to keep bugs off of you, which I did not oh, do today. I about that. But uh, cool. yeah, people put powdered yarrow on their dogs, fur, and cats, outdoor animals. And on bites, is that correct? Oh, on You've bites, done that on it's bites, so it? good. Yes. Nice. You so just, you just put the tea or the tincture? tea or the tincture. I've done both. If nice. you happen to have a salve or something, that might work. Um, but tea or tincture is, is amazing. So hear that, everybody. Put yarrow in a spray bottle. Spray it all over your body. Yeah, and you can also use it, you know, if you have acne internally. You can use it internally and topically. Like, use it on anything that you'd like to heal more quickly. You know, soak a rag. And I wouldn't use the tincture on your face necessarily unless you had, like, a an, act, an active bug bite or something, you know, even, like, a another kind of poisonous bite. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Definitely the tea is very beautiful. And you can also use it as a steam. Mm. But, um, yeah. So buy some yarrow or find an herbalist friend in town who really knows what they're talking about and who has harvested it, you know, hundreds of times themselves and go with them because it does grow many places. Don't gather it and drink it from the empty lot in your Brooklyn neighborhood because it will have a lot of... Uh, you know, toxic stuff in it, exhaust and who knows whatever runoff from buildings and stuff. You could gather it and study it from there and draw it and smell it and keep it under your pillow. But um, don't drink it from, you know, a, a dirty, empty lot. Fields, beautiful fields, um, your backyard. It, it loves growing by the water, lakes and oceans. So those kinds of, you, you should definitely, you could definitely get to the point where you gather it yourself, you know. And what part do you gather? What does it look like? Um, it's white. It has, it has the millifolium. So each leaf actually has hundreds or dozens of tiny lookalike leaves on it. Um, you know, it, it's. Almost ferny, almost fern-like Yeah, leaves, right? the leaves the are ferny. Mm -hmm. And then the, the flower is actually made up of tiny white flowers as well so that's mm -hmm. kind of milla in itself as well 
So uh, it has a very strong smell. Um, one might say foot-like. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it is a little bit more sweet. But yes, yeah, yeah. Find you know there there's many local herbalists that sell their tinctures and sell dried herbs. Finding somebody on Etsy or if you follow someone on Instagram that's an herbalist and they sell their stuff, you know it's great to get as local as you can. You might find your neighbor might you know have been an herbalist in the mm. '60s and knows what she's talking about and can take you out. Um, yeah, it's also similar to Queen Anne's lace, which is not yarrow and has none of the benefits of yarrow, which is a carroty smelling white flowered herb it's actually a wild carrot it's wild carrot yeah Amazing. queen anne's lace is wild carrot so what part of the yarrow are you harvesting i harvest the whole herb okay. and when somebody talks about the herb of something they're talking about anything that grows above the ground so above the ground is the herb yes. versus versus the root i mean Got people it. do use yarrow root um so it's root herb seed Right? Yes. Well, seed is part of the herb as Got well, it. but in this case, yeah. I mean, there are there are certain times you would only use the seed of things. Got it. Yes. Um, that's a good way to think about it. But yeah, I mean, you can cut it right at the at, at the earth and dry or tincture that whole thing. Mm. Now, how do how would you tincture it? How so do with that? to tincture that, um, you just you just chop it all up. You chop it up as small as you can, and you use 90 to 100 proof alcohol. So like a good, try to get something non-GMO, like a good non-GMO gluten-free alcohol that comes in a glass bottle if you can, or whatever. You know, you could use vodka, um, brandy. I use an organic cane or grape alcohol that's actually 200 proof, and I water it down. Mm-hmm. Um because 100 proof actually means it's 50% alcohol and 50% water. And that's that's the perfect ratio that so you nice. want for yarrow. Yep. So you chop it up as small as you can. It's great to spend some time with it, chopping it. Um, since I've been a mother, I have sometimes filled my blender with my alcohol and thrown the plant in. Because there are times I only have 10 minutes to make my mm. yarrow for the winter. Mm-hmm. And I really want it. And, you know, as much as I want to spend the time sitting with yarrow i don't always have the time but if you're learning there's nothing like doing every step by hand so just to review yes so you take the herb from the earth up yes. cut it, mm-hmm. chop it up really tiny or throw it into the blender mm-hmm. um you use 90 to 100 proof alcohol yep and you fill it to the top of whatever jar you're putting the herb in yes yeah so you you take a nice glass jar like a canning jar and you fill the jar as much as you can you're not stuffing it but filling it with your herb your yarrow and then on top of that you pour the alcohol on top and then you cap it and you can shake it every day you can open it up and poke it with you know a clean chopstick or something you don't mm. really want to put metal in there how i'm sorry how long do you want to for six weeks six weeks at okay. least and then you can uh, strain it and then you have it and then you can have it I mean you can make one jar of yarrow and have it for years it's uh, mm-hmm. well it's just amazing I mean you, you really need it in your life even if the coronavirus goes away and never mm-hmm. comes back you, you need yarrow and I'm not selling yarrow I mean I do sometimes but I'm not selling it now <laughs> I just <laughs> want everyone <laughs> to have it because it's not like something that just masks your symptoms people it yeah. actually heals you and it and it takes away it makes you less likely to get it again because, mm-hmm. again, it's getting it out of your system. It's not just like, oh, I took this painkiller and I temporarily feel better. It's Yarrow is actually healing the condition that sets you up for getting the state of disease. Yeah, and just, just to go over that for everybody who's new at, at herbs and herbalism, a tincture is any kind of herb, a plant, that is sits in alcohol, like Eamon said, for six weeks or mm-hmm. longer. And that alcohol extracts all those chemical compounds that are medicines. And because it's alcohol, it preserves them. Yeah. So you can think of having alcohol on the shelf. People do it for decades. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've made a medicine that's going to last for a very, very long, long time. It's almost for free. Yeah. Whatever the alcohol costs. <laughs> exactly. In the, your $2 jar. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a great way to really learn. When you learn how to see these herbs in nature and you, and you just learn how to identify and harvest, yeah. you become an amazing doctor for yourself, essentially for free. And your health gets better because it's not just removing the bacteria or whatever the issue is. It's actually strengthening your system. Yes, absolutely. So that's the tinctured version. What's mm-hmm. the? How do you make a tea out of yarrow for all of us tea drinkers? Well, to make a tea, you would 
cut it the same way. I mean, you can also just cut the flower, but the leaves and the stalk also have good good chemical constituents in them too. And you, so you would cut it, you know, however many you're cutting, and then you either would tie them from some natural fabric rope, like a hemp rope or a cotton rope string, and you hang them somewhere dry. Um, people hang, hang their herbs in their attics to dry. Um, I've heard of people drying them in their cars, <laughs> you know, there's always those That's people. That's a good idea. Yeah. Cars I mean, really if you're like drive. driving around and you don't know where you're going to live or whatever, <laughs> or whatever, you're traveling in the coronavirus days, yeah. dry it in your car. And then you're going to be breathing it in, which is, you know, amazing too. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, I like right now, because we have room where we live now to dry things on screens. And we have all these window screens that we're not using <laughs> because we have new, better ones. So you, you know, Hey, you put the window screen between two things, you know, so that the air can circulate around it and you put the yarrow on it and you would turn mm -hmm. the yarrow every couple of days, unless it's in a very moist room, which I don't suggest drying something in a moist room, of course, anyway, it's not going to really go bad, but it will dry so much nicer. And mm -hmm. then I like to keep the yarrow big and put it in a big eight cup glass jar. And then nice. in the winter, if somebody... Um, even if my daughter is just playing outside and it's cold and it's wet, or if I, you know, when she was going to school, if I would pick her up from school and I would find, oh, your shoes are wet. How long has that been happening? Um, I would give her a, a nice warm cup of yarrow when she gets home and it's delicious. You can also put honey in it. If you're not, uh, that kind of vegan that doesn't eat honey. And that goes well together, and that's also a good way to get your children to start drinking herbs because although it's important to shift our taste buds so that we can, you know, take in more of Earth's medicines, sometimes you just want your kid to drink some yarrow because they just got bit by a tick or they're, mm -hmm. you just found out they have to get vaccinated next week and you don't necessarily have time to tenderly and slowly... <laughs> Uh, acclimate them to new flavors so you can do that you can also use a little maple syrup but honey goes well with it i was going to say if you are the kind of vegan who yeah. doesn't want to use honey maple syrup or um, molasses or agave or something. yeah i mean go with maple maple, maple syrup maple is syrup. just you know of course real maple syrup oh, yeah. yeah in parallel and th that's you know that's another it just brings me up to another point of i think this was the year that lara didn't get sick no, she didn't get sick at all. Well, she actually she Once. got really sick, right? And it was probably the coronavirus. Right. Yeah, but from from October until mid February, right? Uh, she didn't get anything, and she goes to school with thirty kids, and like Eamon said, sometimes her shoes are wet. She's outside playing in the cold. Sometimes her friends have twin <laughs> trails of green snot coming out of their noses. Yeah, and they're and playing they're and kissing hands. and hugging. It. Yeah. And she didn't get sick once. And yeah. I, I thought that was such a testament to Yarrow. Because she drinks it every day. She <laughs> loves it. She asks for it. Yes. And we're like, well done, John. We are good barons right now in this moment. Yeah. Um, but that's just really good for everyone to hear because it, it Yarrow just works for every... I mean, so far you've heard everything Eamon said. It works for everything so mm -hmm. that we're talking about. I don't know one thing I wouldn't... Is there one thing you wouldn't recommend it for? If you are somebody who menstruates and bleeds way too much, actually, no, yarrow is is actually, <laughs> I See? take that back. Yeah, because yarrow, <laughs> the thing about yarrow that's really interesting is it w tends to work in both directions. Oh, nice. Some herbs are really like that. Nice. Some herbs will just warm you up. Some herbs will just cool you down, um, so to speak, herbal speak. But yarrow, actually, if you, uh, like, after I gave birth, I was bleeding and bleeding and bleeding like crazy. Mm -hmm. And one of the herbs that I used, um, I used witch hazel, shepherd's purse, and yarrow. I was definitely flooding, as it's called. And um, I had accidentally given birth in a hospital, even though I had planned to home birth. But, you know, th the thing I wanted was just to get out of the hospital as soon as possible because they kind of kill you in the hospital. Like, I was trying to sleep, and every 15 minutes they're taking my blood pressure and doing all these things. So... I legally left early so I could sleep and take my herbs, and I always thank the goddess that I did because <laughs> that's just there. I mean, if you have a mom like mine, you just need to be an herbalist because you just um, you need to learn to lean on Mother Earth because Mother Earth is really there for you in all the ways that you would expect a good mother to be there for you. Mm -hmm. 
there's herbs that help you emotionally, that support you, that make you feel like you're getting a hug. There's herbs that take care of you when you're sick. There's herbs that make you feel beautiful and make you actually more beautiful. And there's herbs that nourish you, like that food your mom used to make. So um, my mom is a little bit of a wild woman herself. So I got, I got some of the best mothering. I, you know, I was always clean and fed. But um, otherwise, I was very free to, to learn what I was to learn. And yeah, that's where, you know, the great mother comes mm. in, I guess. I think that's what I love about how you see herbs. It's it's very relational. Mm. And, you know, they're personified and it's like the spirit and the energy and the personality of the herb is something you really connect with more than just this medicine, mm -hmm. this like product or object you really see as a living being that you commune with. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I truly that. believe that herbs want to help us. I mean, there's so many indigenous stories where they say, you know, at the beginning, the two leggeds, in other words, the humans weren't doing very good. And all the animals got together and they were like, look, we have to kill these people. Mm -hmm. They are so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and they are ruining everything and they're making a mess of this beautiful place. And they were like, yeah, the bear is like, I'll kill them with my claws. And the turtle was like, I'll trip them in the road or whatever. <laughs> Everyone had a plan. And the plants heard the, the animals and they were like, oh, well, I don't know. Should we kill them or should we heal them? And the plants got together and they had a big you know, community meeting, and they said, let's try healing them first. Mm, mm. And so each plant came up with an idea like, oh, okay, I'll heal them when they've eaten too much and they're feeling crappy. I'll be the one who helps them. Oh, I'll be the one for when they can't poop. Oh, yay. Mm, wow, look mm. at you. You're so humble. Mm -hmm. You know, like all the plants that I'll, you know, the herbal plants, they all had that, and so they're still helping us. I mean, herbs I are just that. amazing. So that's where I want to end. Herbs are just amazing and they're here to help us and um, they can heal us. I've been healed by them. Eamon's been healed by them. Eamon's healed hundreds of thousands of people by teaching them about herbs. Well, the um, herbs have healed them. I have introduced them to the herbs, but they have healed themselves with the herbs. I heard her saying that in my mind <laughs> as I was saying that. And it's important. It's true. Um, so, you know, if you have more questions for Eamon... If you ever want to work with Amen, you want to take a workshop with Amen, you can go to www.invokeyourhighestself.com. Mm -hmm. And there's a contact form there and there's a mailing list. She's an amazing writer. Um, she's booked right now for the rest of the year, but she might pop in and out with a webinar. I think I'm going to do um, another coronavirus webinar and some other, maybe maybe a devaxing webinar. Yeah, just sign up for my mailing list. I'm way too busy to over email you. I'm an under emailer, mm -hmm. so you'll be happily surprised when you hear from me. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sign up for, you know, join me. They're going to be free. It's all free for the rest of the year. It's all free. Everybody gets a webinar. <laughs> love it. Love it. Thank you so much for taking the time and teaching us about herbs and teaching us about yarrow and just hanging out on the back porch with me. Yeah, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be outside, and I know you're such a lover of yarrow yourself, so it's a pleasure to talk to you about it. You're welcome. So as always, before you go, take a breath. <sighs> Feel your body. Notice your emotions. And take that awareness into your life. I want to thank you for sharing this space with me. For more information on my work, or any events that I might be hosting, please visit holisticlifenavigation.com. And you can find me on Instagram or Facebook at Holistic Life Navigation.